Wow. All right, this room is amazing. You can see the strip over there. Mountains in this direction. I think there's a storm rolling in. Sink, drinks. A lot of drinks, coffee, tea, little place to work, little iPad that controls the room, bathroom, bedroom here. Wow, this is so beautiful. View of the mountains, the biggest hotel TV I think I've ever seen. And another bathroom, a main bathroom with toiletry kits. Not exactly sure what this is. Giant shower and toilet. Bathrobes, slippers. Oh my gosh, I just found the greatest feature of this room. There's an ice maker here. Ha! Huh. So this is a brand new hotel. I think they've been open for about a month and apparently this place got some amazing food. So I'm gonna unpack really quick, go downstairs, meet up with my buddy Phil and we're gonna go eat a lot. What's up buddy? <laughs> How are you? How's it going? Good to see you man. Good to see you. So the first place we're at is an old favorite of mine and it's one of yours too. Absolutely, yeah, one of my favorites for sure. And they just opened here. They just opened here, beautiful new space. Oh, it's beautiful. And then yeah. today we're gonna do something special? I think we're gonna make some noodles. I can't believe I'm trying to do this. Yeah. So they're gonna teach us how to do it. It's gonna be fun. All right, let's do it. Sam is the owner of Sean Noodle. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. Okay, so what do we do? So this is dough for the handful noodle. Uh -huh. First, we have to get the dough to spin. How do you? You're gonna grab <laughs> only the two sides to edge of the uh -huh. dough, so you just cross it. You can just put little two hands together. Oh, oh, I messed up already. Yeah. This does not look like yours. <laughs> this in Chinese is called liu tiao. Liu tiao. Liu tiao. Because and what? Which is kind of relaxing the dough. Uh huh. Smoothing the dough, get it to fine and smooth. You have to slap on the table as well. Uh-huh. And, and this is all it. to make it, make it the texture better. Yeah, you're gonna shake it longer. Yeah, shake it longer. And you put your two hands together when mm. you pop it. And the next turn, you're gonna put it back to the other side. All right, back on the other side. Yeah. Oh, all right. You're getting there. Then we spray the flowers on, we start rolling, which is Round. So yours looks like a like a ponytail. <laughs> Mine looks like kindergarten project that I messed up on. Now we're going to the next step. Okay. I'm gonna separate these two, two, two. I'm just gonna use two. your dough. Yours yeah. look good. And one is mine. So we're gonna roll it down when it's ready. Uh huh. We're gonna grab the two sides. Yeah. And you're gonna shake it once. Okay. And then put like a U shape on the table. Okay. All right. Once you see one side is kind of thicker. Gonna grab it and shake it to try to balance it out. Oh, okay, okay. You grab it. Yep. You've got two noodles now. Uh huh. You're gonna keep folding it, which you get double and double. You rip this off? Yeah, so once you have a like excessive dough on your hand, okay. you can rip it off. Okay, we'll leave it out. Yep. And you're gonna grab the other side, uh -huh. which the bottom that you fold it. Uh huh. You're gonna have a turn fold of your hand from uh -huh. the center. Yep, there you go. And you pull. And you put it on the table, you make it another U. You see, we already doubled the noodles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very elastic -y, by the way. During that, we're going to put some a little more flour so avoid the stickiness. Okay. Once we see some that is bigger pieces, we're going to put it on the dress. We're going to just repeat the same. This looks like Medusa's hair. That's what I got. We'll use a cutter. Just cut it up. Then we'll get some of either angel hair, whatever size of noodle you like. Yeah, yeah. And we have to put it to the pot. Put it pot right away. So that it doesn't stick, it doesn't stretch out, it doesn't poke, it doesn't break. There you go. Well, uh, I don't know if this is edible. Maybe this section <laughs> is, but definitely not that. It's not this one, but we can always reuse it. We can reuse it. it I'm glad this can be recycled. Thanks for and showing me, Zed. No, we're gonna do. Next one, we're gonna go with your favorite. Don't show me. Oh yeah, that is yeah, one of my favorite. Nice shake noodle, nice, nice, nice noodle. Uh huh. Wow, this is very firm. 
Yep, now we're gonna quick sit it mm -hmm. onto the wood block and then you guys just press it, make sure it's firm. This has gotta be very firm, very cold, yeah. so when you cut it, it when flies cut away. It, yeah. Now next to you, you have got a handle okay. um, that you can grab. Yep. This side, you're gonna push it toward your shoulder. Yep. And this is a special knife for the double shell man, yeah. which you can do it. Similar to when you're uh, peeling an apple. Mm. You have one of your finger mm -hmm. holding the nut here mm -hmm. and just press on the dough and go. Whoa! You want to start from the beginning to the end so you get a longer noodle. Mm -hmm. This takes some practice too. Yes, yes. This is a workout. Because this is pretty heavy. Yeah, it is. Thank you so much for showing me, yeah, Sam. My pleasure. I haven't had this in a long time, so I'm excited to eat. Yep. So I'm going to eat all that. That's all my. I don't want other people to eat my deformed noodles. And then I'm going to try some other stuff that I, I really miss about this place. So. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Mike. Thanks, Mike. And of course, my buddy Phil is joining me, and you're gonna take me around to some of the other float places here today. Yeah, absolutely, I was like, super excited to do it. Well, we gotta start with this. Yeah. And Sean just opened a new location in this hotel. I'm just giddy because this is, I think, the first Chinese beef noodle soup I had when I first came to Vegas. I love this so much. I'm so glad to see that doing, they're doing so well. What did you get? I got the spicy pork belly noodle soup with a handful of noodles. And I got my favorite, which is the traditional beef noodle soup. They made a spicy version for this location. A lot and of people wanted it. A lot of people wanted it. Yeah. And there's a line up, well, there's a line up the door right now. And it's about like three o'clock in the afternoon. Today was a truly humbling experience, actually, because Sam, the owner of this establishment, if I wanted to learn how to hold noodles. I've done it before, a little bit. I've done Biam Biam noodles before, which is much easier. Have you done this before? No, no, they've asked me a couple times and I'm too nervous. But you know, you got the hang of it at the end. No, no. I, I saw you did like a, it looked a like spin. A, it looked like a preschooler playing with Play-Doh. It was not pretty, <laughs> but cheers, my friend. Cheers. Let's go. Oh yeah. Hit spot, right? Oh yeah. Mm. It's so much beef flavor in the broth. And that's what gets me right away. Oh, look at how tender this beef is. They cook this beef for eight hours to extract all that beautiful flavor. It just breaks apart when you squeeze it with your chopsticks. Yeah, it's so good. I love how the nitrate noodles really just cling to all the flavors in there. Great texture and chew. I am a huge flavor person. I like my flavors aggressive. So when I like my beef noodles, so I want it beefy. This thing, noodles, that flavor is so in. The spice level. I didn't have to add any uh, chilies in here. Do you do Chinese vinegar? I learned that from you. You learned that from me? Yeah. Do you add them or so not? So halfway through, I kind of add it. I, yeah, you gotta try it before adding this. Yeah, I always add it because it just gives it a lot more umami, in my opinion. And I like to add pretty generous amounts nice. of Chinese vinegar. Right, I'm, gonna do it. I'm never gonna do it right off the go. It's gonna be with Mike. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I appreciate that. I don't like it spicy. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it spicy. I just love the nice chew of yeah. the thick texture so of good. these noodles. You got the pork one. Yeah, the pork one's that? quite good. It's a mix of beef and chicken broth mm -hmm. with a little uh, interesting sweetness finish at the end. All right, excuse us. I need to dive hip first into this because I've missed it so much. This is the dandan noodles with regular tempo noodles. Mm. The texture's so good. Yeah. We really do a great job with this. It's my favorite version in town. Is it? Yeah. It's so interesting how so many Chinese places do it differently, whether it's how hot they serve it or the mince pork. They add a lot of heat in here. Yeah. There is a lot of heat in here. <laughs> wow, did it increase the heat since I've been here? To me, it's still to the point where I love it, I want to eat it. You got to prepare yourself. You can come here, you get this, get ready for the heat. Yeah, the servers are now warning guests when they come in and order it. They're so good though. Yeah. It's rich, it's very meaty. A little crunchy vegetables in here as well. No matter what I eat, like stuff you grew up with is always gonna be the best stuff. Agreed. All right, we better get to these dumplings before it gets cold. All right, love these. Mm. All 
bro. Mm. Silky, oh, yeah. juicy, delicious. It's plump. Yeah. There's a lot of meat in here. Yeah. Really thin outer wrapper. Mm. It's not just like the filling is pork. It's actually a lot of different flavors in the filling. And the wrapper is so barely there. So these are their spicy broiled dumplings. This is a new dish. Is it? Yeah. I don't remember trying this before. Yeah, thicker skin. And I believe we got the pork and cabbage. Get some of that spicy sauce inside the dumplings. Wow. I like how they do dumplings. I love the dough to filling ratio, shiny and filling. Yeah, yeah. All handmade back there. Mm -hmm. Super seared on the outside. Yeah, really um, nice pan fry. Put some chilies on this. I'm gonna add a little vinegar. Oh, wow. I'm just gonna you copy you. Yeah, why not? You got it this way. Here you go. All right, ready? Here's my friend. Cheers. Oh, there's so much juice in here. Oh, this is really good this way. I've never had it this way. It's so juicy. Mm. It's kind of like a double sear shung jian bao. Yes. Like a very soupy one. All right, well, we got some stuff to finish up, but this is an extreme, extreme delicious lunch down memory road. We're gonna eat, see you in a bit. So the next place we're going to, right next door. It's a very popular uh, downtown sushi spot known as You or Me. They just opened up here. It's actually bigger than their downtown location with a different menu. You been here before? Yeah, a couple times. All right, wow. There's a lot of stuff here, huh? It looks beautiful. All right, let's eat again. All right. Oh whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait, one sec. I don't even know where you're gonna put this, honestly. This is so crazy. Have you seen that before? No. Yeah, I've never seen this before. No. This is incredible. To show you guys this platter, we have to finish this first <laughs> because this table is now full. Let's eat this before, all right, before all right. we, we Let's uh, do it. this gets cold. So we got the sizzling wasabi demi gukaku, just served on a hot stone. And the sauce they pour on this, best demi glaze. Yeah. And also we got a uh, uni crab pasta, stir fried udon noodles with crab with uni. Every single thing about that sounds amazing. Mm. Ooh. This pasta could afford the penthouse at this hotel. That's how rich it is. For sure. There's kind of a sweetness from just the seafood itself. Mm -hmm. The crab is sweet. The uni is definitely sweet and creamy. They put some sake in here. I taste a little bit of alcohol. Mm. That's a nice touch. You know it has a nice texture too. That's good. It's really rich though. This is I'm really excited. They slice the beef rare, so it finished cooking on this hot stone. And then they drizzle all this demi glaze on here. It looks lean. Yeah, it looks lean. So it might be. Mm. Mm. I'm a fan of this. I like the peppery flavor. Middle pieces, really tender. I like the glaze. I don't taste much of the wasabi. I might try to drag this Yeah, here. let's dunk it a little bit. Ah, oh, it's hot. <laughs> this is a hot stone. Mm. You gotta eat this quick because you want it as tender as possible and it's gonna continue to cook on this hot stone. The glaze, it's got a nice savory umami flavor to it. It is also very rich. If you want aggressive flavor, like these are very flavorful dishes. A lot of people recommend this one to me and I'm, I'm glad we tried it for the first time. It's yeah. so no, good. No, it's good. I like it. I feel like moving this <laughs> to the middle would require a permit. This is the most incredible Vegas-esque platter of sashimi and sushi I've ever seen. There's giant pieces of fresh uni. Looks like avocado sushi with tuna on top, I think. Different nigiri, tuna, salmon, there's snapper. I thought, I swear to goodness, I was like, why are they cutting up 8 5 you? <laughs> it really looks like right? 8 But this is Otoro. It's beautiful, so marble. It looks like fresh snow just fell on piece. Sweet shrimp, deep fried prawn heads. That's always good. Let's just start with this, start I guess. Start with a roll. Okay. Let's start with a roll. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. That fish is about as creamy as avocado. That's some melt in your mouth. Fish. Yeah. A couple of giant pieces of uni here. You like this? You like uni? I do like uni. I do like uni, but it's rare to eat it just straight. Yeah? yeah. All right, try it out. All right. Mm. Oh, yeah. 
It's sweet, right? Texture's good, sweet, the essence of the ocean right there in my mouth. A little brininess. Oh, that's creamy. Oh, that's really, really good. My first went to Tsukiji. I had Winnie for the first time, I was like, did the ocean just sneeze in my mouth? <laughs> if you really get a fire to it, this is delicious, very rich. It's just really creamy and nice. This is one of my favorite things. Yeah, can't go wrong. Mm. Nice. It's really sweet. Mm. It's like a little gelatinous-y yes. texture yeah. to it. Good Want to try a piece of the scallop? Yeah, let's go hotate. Ooh. Wow, I love the lime flavor of that scallop, little citrus hit. Yeah, that's really interesting. They put it in twin slices of lime. Nice little citrusy flavor. All right, this is my favorite. It's a chinook. Mm. Yeah, super tender. That's pretty melting your mouth, huh? I'm gonna have another. Yeah, do it. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. Next one, this is yellowtail. This looks really nice and fatty, I don't know. Color's good, it looks good. Oh yeah. That's really buttery. That is definitely a progression in fattiness. I don't even know I'm ready for this next step. I don't know if I'm ready either. I swear to goodness, I thought this was a K5 Wagyu. I was looking for the grill. I'm like, am I supposed to put this on a grill? So marbled out. Wow. That fattiness is off the charts. <laughs> it's pretty fatty. The fattiness that it just lingers on your tongue. What a great way to Kind of cap it off. This is yeah, part. we haven't tried this. This is a snapper. Mm. Very delicate. Yeah. Every single piece, you don't need to chew much. No. We just asked. Most of the fish is from Japan. The otoro, they said, was from Mexico. Mexico. Mexico otoro, interesting. Who knew? Uni's from Japan as well, so probably Hokkaido uni. All the fish is quality, quality stuff. They say the flight is in almost daily. It's really good. Maybe we did save the best for last. Because <laughs> the prawn head? I do love these. Do you one bite these? Yeah, usually. Sure. Let's go. Just save all that good innards in that head. You have the time to perfectly, otherwise, he is too overdone inside the head. But you want that kind of creaminess and the flavor. It's like a shrimp chip that just stuffed with umami. All right, we can't let this sit here, so uh, we're going to finish this up. See you in a bit. Now we're going for some Italian food. This is like a roller coaster with you. It's a fun, delicious roller coaster. Right. We're going around the world <laughs> in one place. And this is all in the same food court. Yeah. Isn't how crazy is this? That's pretty cool. This is Fiorella. It's owned by Mark Vetri, who's a famous chef in Philadelphia mm -hmm. uh, for Italian food. What I love about this place are all the handmade pastas. I'm a, such a sucker for a handmade pasta. Anything, they do some great dishes here. I'm excited uh, for you to try it out. So we got the beef carpaccio because this is the number one recommended dish. Yeah. We got the Crab toast, homemade focaccia bread. We got the uh, rigatoni, yeah. maffoldine. Strawberry right. ragu, horseradish. That sounds awesome. That sounds really awesome. I'm actually really excited for this. I love Italian food. I love fresh bread. There's a lot of things to be excited about on this table. This bread is intense because they have these giant trays of dough. And because they make this bread fresh throughout the day, this just came out of the oven. Let's start. Yeah, let's go oh with the bread. Oh my gosh. And a little olive oil and vinegar. Mm. Like a cloud. It's so fluffy. As we're chewing, I hear somebody else in the distance just going, this bread is so amazing. It is so amazing. Wow. You can tell this is freshly baked. Yep. And it's just like a little springy mattress. Well, let's try this. This looks really, really delicate. Mmm. Oh, way more flavor than I thought it was gonna be. Smoked and pickled mushrooms. I'm shook by this. I taste some dry agedness with the pickles and then the shaved cloth. And the smokiness. And then you got that awesome richness from the fava. Oh, that's so crazy. Mind blowing. Really nice. Mind blowingly good. We gotta try this. This looks really, really nice. Toast in the oven, and then giant chunks of snow white crab. It looks like some dill. Mm. Wow. 
That crab is so sweet. Oh love God. the herbs. I love the toasted bread. The lemon just cuts through the richness and it just gives a nice balance to the bread and the crab. This is some deep flavored crab toast. And as you chew, you get some of that herbiness. Yeah, the different things are just hitting you throughout the bite. There is some secret magic to this. All right, we got two pastas in front of us. Are you more into a red sauce or a white sauce? I've always been a red sauce guy. Why? Yeah, Tell me why. I just like the tanginess of the tomato, and to me, growing up on the East Coast, I like the Italian style food, and that red sauce best represents that for me. I love red sauce as well, mainly because I want to dip my bread in it. Okay. I, I love, yep. you know, like I yeah. love dipping bread into the yeah. red sauce. So it's rigatoni and meat sauce, basically. Sausage. Sausage ragu. And plenty of butter. And they make this in-house every day. Mm. I love ragu that's not overly tomato-y or too sharp or too zesty. This is the perfect amount. Pasta is incredible. You can tell this is homemade. This reminds me of the ragu I had in Italy. I chased that with some bread. Mm. This is the mafaldini. Yeah. It's a short rib ragu with horseradish, which I think it sounds really good. I oh, love it. Whoa. I love it. Look at this. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are we at Sean Noodle again? <laughs> mm. Oh, wow. This pasta texture, just like the other one, beautiful. Rich and creamy dough, short rib, perfectly melty, and adds more richness to this pasta. You can taste the horseradish. I think this place, pasta is the star, as much as I love short rib. I still like the, the ragu more, personal preference. I love ragu. What do you think? I do too. Maybe we could get this pasta in a red sauce. <laughs> it would be quite nice. But yeah, it's this delicious. Is great. Delicious. Well, yeah. thank you so much for introducing this to me. Because yeah. This is real legit Italian food here. Well, thank you for showing me around the food court. I know you're going to show me around for a couple more days yeah. while I'm here. Thanks for taking me around. I'm glad to share a lot of meals with you. And guys, uh, make sure to follow Phil. Your handle? It's Las Vegas Phil at Las Vegas Phil F I L. And you spell it, you spell it differently. Yeah. Las Vegas F I L L. Yeah. All right, well, I'll have all Phil's information down below. And uh, I'm gonna go keep on eating. You gotta go somewhere, so see you tomorrow, man. Oh yeah, for sure. Apparently, this is one of the windiest days in Vegas ever. It was so bad, the strip was out of power for about two hours. Anyway, this is a great little bubble tea shop. Let's go grab a drink. Great bubble tea, pretty good. The dinner's at this new Vietnamese restaurant called Saigon Corner, and I am here to try out there the hot stone pho. This place looks really good. There's shrimp pho, bung bo wei. Oh, I wish I could get a bung bo wei as well. This is the hot stone pho. Giant lava stone. There's beef that looks really beautifully marbled. Butter, some oil and vinegar, some wasabi sauce, it looks like. I'm gonna put some butter on here. This is already starting to smell so good. And the meat is getting cooked really, really quick. So probably only need about 15 seconds on each side. Take the meat, dunk in a little pepper and oil. Mm. Oh, that's tender. Mm. That wasabi dipping sauce is great. Succulent, tender. I think it goes best with the wasabi dipping sauce. Mm. Wow. Yeah, you definitely taste all that marbling. This beef is absolutely superb. It's tender, it's buttery, and just chase it with some pho. Mmm. That is a deliciously light, beefy broth. Also, this place gives you a ton of noodles. This has been a very noodle and pasta centric day. And the perfect way to end it is with some pho. Mm. This is a deliciously fun last meal of the day. Again, this is a relatively new Vietnamese restaurant. Pretty darn good. Always so happy to be back here in Vegas. And every time I come back, there's always new foods to try. And there's always all the places I went to. Let's down below for you. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later. A few moments later. One last thing to eat. This cookie place is still open at like 11 o'clock at night. Oh, these are ginormous size cookies. Apple, oatmeal, lemon, chocolate chip, birthday cake, sea salt. There's Rice Krispie bars, brownies, Oreo rice. Oh, there's a lot of stuff. This place is more than cookies. There's a whole 
selection of foods. This looks amazing. Signature guacamole? Yes. I don't know what it is. Something about Vegas just makes me hungry. And I just walked in. I just wanted to get a cookie. I saw this Dungeness Crab guacamole. It's just sun is so good. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, this is really, really good. Sweet crab, creamy guac. There's some spicy salsa. Actually, more smoky than spicy. Still delicious. Oh, also, look at the size of this cookie. Uh, this one's kind of falling apart. So this is half a cookie. It's the oatmeal apple cookie. My favorite cookie was oatmeal raisin. Now it's oatmeal apple. This is just phenomenal. Want to go for a midnight snack? Ended up with a midnight feast. All right, for real this time. <laughs> 